two years is just about long enough to forget physical and emotional pain and rose tint those memories. I ran my first ultramarathon, the Comrades Marathon in South Africa, two years ago. And I'm now ready to take it a step further and progress to the 100K. So please join me as I'm gonna share my highs and my lows as I attempt the epic Race to the Stones. All right, we are two days away from the ultra and I've got mixed emotions. I'm actually quite happy with my training, which is unusual for me. I've nailed the mileage. Haven't done as much intensity as I did for my last ultra because I've actually coached myself. and I've had some lows on some of the runs, hopefully enough lows because I know I'm gonna hit that when it comes to race day, but I did a couple of weeks of 110K plus. However, I've also got to do 100K in one go, so it's still really hard to get my head around it, but I'm hoping that the legs are ready, but there's a few other things that maybe I haven't quite covered. So I've concentrated on the training because that's a bit I love, but I haven't really nailed my kit choices and my nutrition. And you might be going, what on earth? Yes, I'm two days away. And I've been panicking this week, buying things I haven't tried before, all of what I know you shouldn't do. But yeah, I'm just like gonna chuck loads of stuff in my pack and hope that if I need to change my socks, then I can do. But it's nutrition that I'm really worried about. I've done a few three hour runs, quite hard ones, and I just haven't eaten because I've carried my gel, I've looked at it, I've just not wanted it. And I know that if I don't eat, I will really be in trouble. So I'm now trying to up my carbohydrates a little bit, take it easy, which I'm finding really hard. I've got loads of energy. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna have to try and be really strict and make myself eat, because otherwise it could all fall apart. But fingers crossed, it'll all come together on race day. Got priorities here. Coffee. And last minute charging. I am not awake yet. I don't think it's gonna be any nice angle to start at the start of the morning. Hopefully. This will do the job. I don't like mornings before seven. It's gonna be a long day. I'm more, yeah, not amused by this weather at the moment. It's a bit grey, but I guess it'll keep us cool. Just arrived at the race and um, heading in. Here we go. Oh my God, it's real. People are actually on their way to the start. And Georgie, this is actually happening. You'll have to run with me now. How are you feeling? I know, I'm really excited. No, really good, really good. Yeah, I'll show, I should introduce, Georgie is my teammate for today. I've convinced her to run with me. Um, and yeah, we've just met up. So um, it's all time for lots of chat and catching up as we go. I hope so. I've just been saving up my chats for today. So you're in for treat, yeah, I don't think there's gonna be any, any problems with keeping us entertained along the way. Your feet could be an issue with your brand new trainers. Yep, bought these at five o'clock yesterday afternoon, so really excited about breaking them in I the mean, first half. I mean, she obviously yeah. watches a lot of GTN of how to prepare for your <laughs> kit, and we won't talk about training. I can't talk too much. I mean, I've been sort of changing, chopping, changing things. You kind of look what everyone else is wearing, like, oh no, doing another loose stop. Have I got time to eat something? It's kind of like last minute panic. I think we just need to yeah, just enjoy calm, it. take a deep breath. Yeah, and stay in the countryside. It's 10 minutes until we start our 100K. Oh my God. Good luck, Georgie. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Good luck. Oh, right, see you guys on the other side. <laughs> Oh, I was actually a bit nervous at the start, Georgie. Were you? Or are you? It's a bit cold. I don't know whether it's nerves or a bit of a chill in the air. Yeah. I was walking. I was like, jacket on, jacket off. <laughs> um, go on with jacket off, and now I'm feeling chilly. Oh, well. We'll work it out as we go, I'm sure. But yeah. I'm going to just concentrate on running and stop annoying people for a moment. Caught up with Mark. Now, this is Mark's fourth run. You're blending into the trees here, Mark. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, good. <laughs> We've got to keep an eye on where we're going here because it's a little, it's actually the first downhill and I'm kind of feeling my quads already. Uh, it's nice to see a familiar face. The boys left you, have they? Yeah, they left me. First proper hill of the day. 
any excuse to walk. I think it's a true sign I've become an ultra runner that I like hills because I know I can walk, which is such a cop out. And I kind of forget if I'm running a 5K that I'm not supposed to walk up every hill. But this is quite nice. Um, it's just making sure we get going again afterwards. And I promise I will try and chat to you guys when I am doing some running because I think otherwise you just think I'm going to walk 100k and that would actually take all day. We're coming up to 10k. It's one tenth of the way, Georgie. <laughs> Oh, look at that, we've just come out of the forest. What a view. <laughs> yeah, and at least someone is making the most of it. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think I've just slightly managed to overtake someone. The only problem with these paths, as you can see, they're quite narrow. Thank you. And there is my food in the back of my bag. I don't know if I can be bothered to get it out. So, yeah, I'm kind of aware that I should eat soon. It's kind of trying to just keep your own rhythm and not changing pace too much. I think that's what's going to tire us out. Pet stop number two. I'm eating. We're two hours in, 21k. Um, we're basically running along a towpath just past some very fast rotors while they passed us. Flying along. That's quite cool. Running along the river means it's going to be flat for a little bit. The rain has stopped. Well, it's sort of drizzle, dampness. It's a bit damp and grassy underfoot, and the, the grass is kind of hitting my legs. But yeah, I'm miles away from the finish there because I feel like this is near Henley. Do you know where we are, Georgie? Any idea? Uh, somewhere on the Thames, I guess. Yeah, I'm guessing that much. Which kind of makes you think near London, but hopefully we're not too near London. I'm trying to go the other way. But it's quite nice at the moment, so I'm going to appreciate this. the hill and never did I think it would happen that I would be excited about a hill. I've been looking forward to walking for about 10k and like my back's aching a little bit and I wanted some food and I couldn't really eat when I was running so I'm just embracing this hill and we're walking and I've eaten a whole slice and a half of malt loaf which is an achievement it's my second bit of food so, yeah, so i made georgie eat some as well because she's even worse than me she just told me she had one piece of toast for breakfast and and also georgie just realized that not only does she have brand new shoes that are still not 24 hours old she had a sock on inside out <laughs> yeah true story um so if you guys think i'm unorganized this is my role model like my tummy's not happy, it's gonna get a bit of a boring story, but I'm still moving. And we've got to a third pit stop, we're at 43k. So we're making our way towards the halfway point, but it's suddenly now that you start to notice the k's go a bit slower, while they take longer to arrive. And I think it's opened out and it's got a bit quieter. So I'm losing adrenaline. But that's kind of when you need to start eating. And I'm trying hard, but Georgie, can you tell us what you've eaten so far today? Uh, I've eaten a piece of toast. Yep. Um, I've eaten a piece of Heather's malt loaf. Yep. And With a some butter. Salt and really good crisps. That you pretty much choked on. <laughs> and, and that's it. And that's it. But, and that's, that's since she got up this morning <laughs> and she's now around 43k and that's all she's eaten. I lied, we weren't quite at 43k. Oh, My watch good. was. There we go. But look at this. This is the Ridgeway at its finest. We've got lovely footing. It's nice and compact. It's a slightly difficult one. So if you're running with a friend or doing any race with a friend, you kind of almost want ground rules and we haven't had a proper chat about it, but I mean, Georgie's pretty much like my sister. So we don't need to sit down and have the conversation. And she's been saying all along that she's holding me back and, and she's not, you know, I need to talk to somebody and it's just made the miles go by. We're at 48K and I've only really started thinking about it in the last few K. It's got a bit like dull, and but we're still chatting and we've got that distraction. And she wanted to kind of back off a little bit and I feel like I'm slightly pushing her. She feels like she's slightly holding me back and it's just, it's really difficult because we both want to run with each other, but we're both slightly like, 
at the moment, slightly different pace maybe. She just nipped to the loo. We did have a bit of a chat about it a while ago and at 30k she was like, oh, I'm holding up. And I was like, no, you're st I'm staying with you. You know, I've convinced her to come along with me. So the least I can do is kind of help. Well, I don't know if I'm helping, but you know, keep her company. Um, so we've kind of said we're going to assess at 50k. We've done our goodbyes. <laughs> oh, she's still there. And I think we'll see, we'll see each other quite soon because I need another loose stop. But um, that's the thing with this. You keep kind of passing people and you see them again. But I feel really mean. But Georgie's been trying to make me go on for ages. So I'm kind of hoping that actually it's a nice thing to do so that she can go at her pace. She's not feeling brilliant. But I mean, she hasn't really done any training and she's just run 50k with no problem. So, but she's a trooper, so maybe she's struggling more than she's letting on, I don't know. But she's just rung some friends who are a bit further back, the guys we started with, and they're on their way. So hopefully she can run with them and they'll probably catch me up when I hit a complete wall. Beautiful path. So if you can see, it's British countryside and it's best. And I can hear the birds, so they're keeping me company. It's just a beautiful day. It's a lonely, lonely road. Quite enjoying the fact it's lonely though, because I'm not so keen to chat at the moment. And I'm just going to keep moving. Keep on moving. I did have another pit stop and had my first bit of caffeine since my coffee this morning. So uh, I had some Coke and I don't drink Coke and it was the nicest thing ever. Oh, I went back for two more cups. Might be an error. He's got to keep on going and not get complacent. Do you see what I see? 63. Oh yeah. He might be running. Who cares about 63K? Well, I've had lots of time to do maths in my head with all this time to myself and 63k is one and a half marathons 42 and 21 i can still do that 63 so i have just done one and a half marathons or marathon and a half marathon that kind of sounds more impressive doesn't it it means i have less than one marathon to go millie say hi say hi millie say hi there oh look at that she knows how to work the camera Right, I'm gonna love you guys and leave you. Take so care, nice good luck. See you. Thank you, take see care. You again. Oh. Oh. First, this lovely bugger. It does look flat. I promise you, this is one of the steeper hills. <laughs> I've totally hit the wall. Bit too early. I just don't want to run anymore and my legs don't want to run anymore everything hurts so much it's just the shuffle of pain um i think it's the last pit stop that's done it i stopped and the loo and some coke and some crisps i've kind of got my routine now and i just can't get going again and oh my goodness i feel awful okay you ready for this i'm gonna show you what running looks like oh, i just dread the pain first Steps. Can you take a deep breath? Okay. Ah, 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 ah. That's so pathetic, doesn't it? Not making this up. I'm going to keep on shuffling. Enjoy the view. I can't right now. I kind of got bored of the view. I don't really care. But it's still there. It still looks nice. I don't care about much other than working at the most least amount of pain with the least amount of time to get to the finish. And sadly, the least amount of pain is the slower option. The least amount of time is the most painful option because that's running. So I'm kind of a bit torn with which to do now. But yeah. Oh, who thought this was a good idea? I was so um too keen wasn't I to come to like to bite me 
I reckon if I start with Georgie, I'd still be loving life right now. Um, I don't only have distraction, but I wouldn't have got carried away for 20k. I think between 50 and 70, I just felt great. I think broke out. And then at 70, 72 at the food stop, and something happened. And I don't know what. It's street time. I've reached 80k. 20k to go. And I think it's time for sugar, because up until now, I haven't actually had any sugar. Well, obviously I've had a pad cake, but, but I've just had crisps. And yeah, so I've eaten basically like half for lunch. Lunch, breakfast, and a coffee. And then I've had two cereal bars en route, three packets of crisps and some Coke. I'm my first sweeties. I'm hoping they're gonna get me through. I keep going through phases now though of, you know, when you've drunk too much, as in alcohol. Well, hopefully you don't know that. But when you keep thinking, oh no, I'm gonna be sick. And then it passes and you're like, ha, ah, everything's good. And then it comes again in a little wave. Um, I'm not sure what that's telling me. Don't mean to drink more, eat more, eat less, slow down, speed up. I don't know, but it's horrible when it comes. But sweeties are just a reward. Nothing more. But hopefully they're gonna get me to the finish. Um, yeah, 20K. How long is that gonna take? I don't know, I'm so torn with the, I just wanna get there and I don't wanna run. It's a tough battle. Yeah, people are so lovely. And it's just so weird, isn't it? How, when you get tired and things hurt, how emotions just get in the way. And yeah, there's these crowds just cheering me. I just wanted to cry. <laughs> it was like, just the kindness. <laughs> Um, I didn't. <laughs> I'm still not going to. Great. <laughs> and, and yeah, they're like this lovely man. They said how fresh I looked. Now I did accuse them of lying, but they said apparently I do. Now you guys can tell me the truth afterwards. <laughs> oh, that's ten hours exactly, actually. That's how slow I'm going. But that's a lapse time, so including many stops, including the last stop we've just had. So, 10K. I'm gonna love to say I'm gonna push the 10K. I'm gonna crawl the 10K. If I could get an under 11, it'd be amazing, but I think that's just, yeah, who am I kidding? I'm dreaming, but I'll be somewhere soon after 11. You know, in sport, they say pain is temporary. And then get an ultra. Temporary needs to be replaced with some word that describes it better because it doesn't feel temporary. This has been going on a while now. It's kind of hard to describe. It's like deep, deep pain. In my the back, it's like inside my hips, inside my knees. I just, everything just hurts. And I feel like it's the kind of pain that's not gonna stop when I stop moving. I feel like it's too deep rooted. I'm feeling sorry for myself right now. I know, I feel I'm allowed to though, I'm being self-indulgent. I've got 7K to go. And, uh, if you're watching this, 7K just sounds so easy, doesn't it? It's like, ridiculous. Like, what, 7K, you're basically done. <laughs> this is the longest 7K of my life. Um, yeah, but it will. I will get there. <laughs> I know that now, um, even if I have to keep going this pace. I will run again in a moment, but I can't hold my arm up and run. It's too much, it's too much effort for mind and body. But hey, I've still got, I don't know, one and a half kit to go. This is like the worst torture ever. <laughs> so I've got there, but no, you haven't got there. It's like, here's the piece of cake and you can't yet have it. <laughs> it's just mean, really mean. Oh, God, my leg. Absolutely killing me. OMG, what does that say? Finish. 
Cheney came through. Following them up though, next to the line, Heather Bell. Congratulations Heather, welcome to Rutland Farm and Avery. Looking very relaxed across the line, smiling to on these sands. Well, well done Heather. So how was it? Um, you asked me after the last 30k, so that means it's horrific because I've I need to try and <laughs> away. I need to try and remember the 70k because that was fine, but that 30k has definitely overshadowed the 70. It just it's so nice just to curl up. I just want to curl, curl up and not move. Just everything hurts. And it's weird now because <laughs> I'm, the pain is still there even though I stopped. And, but I kind of, it's not as much, but I don't think I could run another K. I mean, I, that, even the last K, even coming into the finish, it still hurt. And you're like, where's the adrenaline? There's none. And it just, it's just hard. In my comatose state, I have just realized that I haven't shared my kit. Now it's not really looking like it did at the start. My kit, I mean what I'm wearing. So I'm going to show you some pretty disgusting shoes. I made them a bit wider, but bright socks to make up for it. Then I wore some rather comfy shorts. I was trying to order a different pair that didn't arrive in time, but I didn't need to because these were super comfy. And then I had a red and a vest top and a visor. I do like my visor because it just kept the rain off my face and the sun. And I carried my waterproof jacket, but I never put it on. We had quite a few showers, but they were short-lived. And yeah, I was really happy with my, my clothing. I haven't taken my shoes off yet to see the state of my feet. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show you. They're throbbing. But nothing hurt superficially whilst I was running. So it's just deeper pain. They're still there. Georgie, come down! Woo! Woo! Shoes. Georgie, when did you buy these? At five o'clock yesterday afternoon. Oh. And how were they? Fabulous. <laughs> new socks? She is mad. Oh, she's got a new socks. They were inside out, but they're now the right way around. And I mean, I cannot believe that your feet are fine. And um, we just have to talk about this bag as well. Yeah. That's Georgie for you. It's over and I am alive and I've started to recover. It's a couple of days post run and I'm now just, just a little bit tired, a little bit achy, but that is it. And it's really easy to just go, oh, how simple, I'll do it again. I haven't yet watched back the footage, but oh my goodness, I can still remember those last 30K that just, I'm, it's hard to get your head around of how far or long 30K can seem, but 70K was fine. And I hit such a wall and, everything hurt it was hard to explain but my knee joints my ankle joints like my hip bones and my pelvis it was just a deep pain and i crossed the finish line and the pain just stayed it was just still there i didn't know what to do with myself for about an hour or so afterwards i couldn't even sit still because everything just hurt so much and it's a really weird experience because normally if you do even a marathon or an ironman you stop and it's such a nice feeling and it wasn't it was just wouldn't go away but um yeah, after that, I've actually come out remarkably fine. I've still got all my toenails, or as many as I had before, which is quite something. I'm pretty chuffed with that. And um, and yeah, just been a little bit hungry, but my body seems to have got over it. But it was just, it was such an experience. I mean, I've got so many great memories from the, the first half and, well, the first two thirds, and then that last bit just kind of slightly overshadowed it. But what an amazing event. I mean, there were 1,500 people doing it, and it was, so well organized. Yeah, it was just brilliant. But one thing I was quite surprised at uh, when I was sort of digesting it, looking back at some of the photos, and someone pointed out the results because I was definitely not racing. I mean, you saw me at the end. I was just surviving. And the idea of even thinking of racing, I was kind of like, at one point I thought maybe 11 hours. And then it was literally just minimize the pain and get to the finish as quickly as possible. So it's kind of balancing out those two. 
But it turns out I was fourth woman out of 500. Uh, I was really, really shocked um, because I felt like no one could go slower than me. I was just shuffling, like was not moving. Well, that's kind of what it felt like. It just felt like the end was never going to arrive. And then, um, and yeah, I think I was 50th overall out of 1,500 people. So I'll kind of take that. Um, doesn't mean I'm an ultra runner by any means. I mean, I do quite like the lots of eating, the lots of chatting, but it's just, yeah, the whole day. I mean, I got up at 2.45 in the morning and I went to bed at midnight. Although having said that, I woke up the next morning and we looked at results and some people had only just finished. And I will take my hat off to those because the yeah, thought of going through the night, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I mean, yeah, the only thought was just get back in time for a glass of champagne, which I managed and that was the main thing. But I just want to quickly say how I am so impressed, not only with the people that managed to keep going through the night, but my friend Georgie, she's absolutely bonkers. I don't know how much you could kind of get from that, but she had her brand new shoes that she'd bought at five o'clock the night before and she had no blisters. Her feet were entirely fine. She basically ate nothing, didn't really drink much. So all I would say is do not listen to her. Please do not take that advice because it's just mad. And she somehow managed to do it in just 40 minutes less than um, sl slower than me and was fine the next day. So yeah, I am just kind of in awe because I did a lot more training than she did. And um, yeah, I did not finish. Well, I did finish smiling because of the just, the kind of elation, but deep down that pain, it was hard to express just just how hard it was and it's a weird one because I kind of people kept saying you look great and I was like you do not know how bad I feel and, I, and I'm just telling you but again you won't know how bad I felt because apparently I looked averagely okay maybe you're gonna disagree but I am so glad it's over I'm so glad I did it at the time I wasn't but yeah now I mean it was being a just having something in the diary in lockdown has been really important I entered it for 2020 didn't know if it's going to happen this year kind of hoped it didn't because I didn't really start training until well I didn't actually have any structure until 10 weeks before and um and I like that structure and I liked having a goal and I'm missing that already I really want to go running I've done a turbo session I say a session I've, I've gone on the bike today and I'm really desperate to run, but there's a few little things that probably need a little bit longer to rest. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's next. Maybe just, you know, enjoy the summer, but I'm going to find another goal. And um, if you guys are inspired by this, I would seriously recommend going and doing an event, just putting something in your diary, whatever it is, but just pushing yourself and trying to run further than you've ever run before, because it's scary, really scary. You just cannot get over how you could do it, but you can and you will feel amazing afterwards of just that sense of accomplishment. And yeah, that's where I'm at. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching me suffer and it's giving you some inspiration. Give me a like, give us a like if you have. And remember you can follow us on social media and you can subscribe here on YouTube.